First of all, it's important to say that the Irish people are a decent and generous people, and they want to do their best to help those uh, people who are in need. Uh, most Irish people want to provide uh, supports for people fleeing violence and war. And it's also important to state that communities across the country have welcomed migrants successfully into their communities, and that many migrants make a very important contribution to both Irish society and the Irish economy as well. And A2 is a Republican uh, political party, so we believe that everybody who is in Ireland should be treated equally and with fairness, no matter what their background is. The colour of a person's skin should have no more significance than the colour of their eyes. Um, it's also the case um, that we need to call out racism where it exists, and the Dublin riots shockingly brought a, a level of racism to the fore that I have never experienced uh, in this country uh, before. So we in to have been calling for a respectful debate on emigration for the last four years. We live in a democracy and citizens have the right to say what's happening in their own country. Uh, and for the last number of years, discussions on, on migration have been happening pretty much in every house up and down the length and breadth of the country. Every house except the houses of the Oireachtas, that is. And the lack of debate, I believe, has been a significant problem. If political representatives of the people do not discuss this issue respectfully, this debate does not disappear. This debate is actually pushed underground into the hands of those who will use it for nefarious purposes. Now, Ireland has a long history of taboo issues and brushing uh, major problems under the carpet. The issues don't disappear. They always have to be dealt with. So remember who we are. We are Chakta Dala. That means we are messengers of the people. Our job is to bring the concerns of the people into this chamber and to, to debate them respectfully. Now, people want a properly managed system, I believe, of migration in Ireland. And they also want a sustainable system. And I believe, unfortunately, that's not what is happening. So I'm going to focus my debate on the government's actions in relation to the migration policy. First of all, there is little or no consultation within local communities. And we have raised this over and over again. The government is ignoring local communities, even when they bring forward proposals with relation to accommodation uh, solutions to the government. Now, this vacuum of information is a petri dish for rumour uh, in relation to what's happening in those local areas. And it's a direct result of the government's uh, actions. To date, also, we've seen little or no community dividend in communities across the country. There's been no financial help to communities in terms of providing health, education, and transport to those under pressure communities. I put a PQ into the Minister for Justice for this very recently in relation to the Community Recognition Fund, which was announced uh, last year. And she told me that only 2.9 million euros of 50 million euros assigned uh, for this purpose has ever been spent. Now, the government's application process is itself a dysfunctional process. So there are about 14,000 people within the, within the process. Thousands of those are waiting two and three years for the first decision to be made. The longest person waiting for a decision is waiting 14 years for the first decision. That's even before we talk about appeals. So an applicant who is not an asylum seeker can remain in Ireland for up to 10 years based on a process that is taking so long. This 14-year application process is putting uh, resources under severe pressure. And it means the state is providing accommodation to possibly thousands of people within the system, but who are not uh, asylum applicants. Um, there's another issue here, and that's in relation to those people who come to the country without val valid travel documents. No, absolutely. There are situations where people leave countries that are war-torn or have major earthquakes, etc., who will not have travel documents. But there are also people coming from other European cities, like Paris and Berlin, etc., without travel documents. It would have been necessary for them to uh, have those travel documents to get on those flights. But the government is not tightening up in relation uh, to that particular issue as well. Um, there's another issue that's really important that the government is not focusing on. 76% of people who are applying for asylum in this state at the moment are not doing it at the airports and they're not doing it at the ports. They're doing it at the IPO. And that means that they have come on other type visas and at the end of that visa, they're then applying for a, a asylum or they're coming through the north of Ireland. And I put in a parliamentary question to ask the Minister for Justice how many people are coming through the north of Ireland in terms of the process, and she says she doesn't know. 
And again, that's representative of the lack of management that the government is involved in. The government should be in communication with our counterparts in London to make sure that we have checks in Larne and in Belfast Airport to make sure we know how many people are coming to Ireland uh, in, in terms of this particular route as well. And just, you know, in terms of deportations, and this is another frustration that people see, 75% of people who receive a deportation order from this government never have their deportation order ever enforced, which is an incredible situation. We have a voluntary deportation system in Ireland. So after a very expensive asylum process, application process system, the people who are successful and the people who are not successful actually have the same outcome, which is, is a very uh, serious issue. And then the other issue here is the government's lack of provision in terms of accommodation. So another parliamentary question that I put into the minister found that the vast majority, 80% of locations where asylum seekers are located are either hotels or their guest houses. So that means that there are downstream tourism pressures on incomes for families working in those types of towns. And the dependency on those accommodation centres is because the government is useless in the delivery of other locations for asylum seekers. So, <laughs> Minister Roger Gorman promised over a year ago now at the stage that 700 um, um, uh, 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 rapid built homes uh, would, be, would be provided in terms of Ukrainian refugees. Just 204 of those have actually be built at the moment. 85% of the pledged rooms in private homes for Ukrainians have actually, were never realized at all. And where Ukrainian uh, and other asylum seekers have settled well, it has been the policy of Minister O'Gorman's department actually to often uproot them and move them to other locations. So any efforts of actually integrating those communities into their host communities have actually been uh, damaged significantly. I believe the government is actually implementing a yellow pack migration system into this country. And what I mean by that is they simply look for location for accommodation and then they leave the host communities and the migrants themselves without the necessary supports that they need, without the integration efforts that they need. And that's a significant part of the problem that's happening uh, in this country. You know, this state does have international responsibilities, but we also have domestic responsibilities. We need to do what we can to help those who are in need, but we also need to make sure that it is sustainable. And if we're going to bring in a population that's bigger than Galway City on an annual basis without the resources in terms of the universities, the hospitals, the dozens of schools, and the tens of thousands of homes, we're going to create great stresses within Irish society. We need a policy of compassion, but we also need a policy of common sense, and that's sorely missing at the moment. Thank you, Deputy. Moving to